We created a subassembly, the cylinder, piston, spring, and screw that you configured in McMaster car. It was a, what was it? It was a 1032 flathead machine screw, an inch and a half in length. And you saved that part, or you should have, in your hardware folder, not in your provided hardware folder, because you went out and you got that. And we're keeping hardware separate from our parts because hardware is not something that we, unless it's part of our process in our manufacturing facility, we buy hardware. Those are a bill of materials thing. Let's take a look at assemblies a little bit more. We did this subassembly and we saved it, but we need to look at some other subassemblies and the main assembly. If you were building, let's say, uh, what's a good example? Let's say you build a motorcycle. Most people that build motorcycles have a motorcycle lift, a height adjustable table that you use to build a motorcycle on. You build the motorcycle on that, call it a base, that table. And the table typically doesn't move. You move around everything else. SolidWorks behaves in a similar fashion. The first part that you put into a subassembly or an assembly is fixed. I can look around this thing, but really... I'm just moving around the object. The object isn't really moving. We need to create a main assembly and then bring in multiple sub-assemblies, mate them together, and in the end, have a finished assembly. Now, sure, there might be one or two parts that don't really fit in sub-assembly modes and we bring those in individually, and that's fine. But if I've used in the past the Boeing 777 as an example, you don't just randomly open a SolidWorks assembly file and bring in 3.2 million parts and start putting them all together. You bring in sub-assemblies, maybe some, I don't know what you'd call them, super sub-assemblies, some assemblies that have multiple sub-assemblies attached, and then you join those sub-assemblies that contain other sub-assemblies together, and you keep doing that until you get an airplane. You don't just fill your screen with 2.3 million parts and start attaching things together like it's a big jigsaw puzzle. So knowing that, let's open up a new file and let's create an assembly. Before we do, I don't know if you've ever looked at this before, but here's the icon for a part and here's the icon for an assembly. So this has one piece, this has two pieces. Huh. Also note that this blue piece right here is seated, attached, I would even say mated to the other one so that this piece here cannot move. Keep that in the transoms of your mind. Let's create a new assembly. And I said that the first part that we bring into an assembly, main assembly anyway, is something that shouldn't move. So if we look at all the parts of our steam engine that I supply, the, the flywheel would probably be the worst choice, right? Because it rotates. The, the, the cylinder standards, the 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock, those don't move, but they're attached to something else. Let's take a look at a picture here. So this flywheel, it rotates. These oscillate back and forth. Horrible choice for a main assembly. This assembly here doesn't really move. That would be an okay choice, I guess. The 2, 6, and 10 o'clock standards, sorry, 2, 6, and 10 attached to the main bearing. That would be okay, I suppose. The one thing that doesn't ever move, though, is the base. I think that the base might be the best choice in this instance, and probably a lot of instances, would be the, a good choice to have as our first part in a, our main assembly. If I were building an engine, the block would probably be the best choice because everything moves within it and around it, but it stays stationary. Okay, so, so in this case, the base is probably the best choice. So let's do that. Let's, we've got a new assembly. I'm gonna browse and I'm gonna click, double click that base. And this base looks different than in the picture. This is just a, a piece of wood with some holes in it. And I'm gonna come up here and click OK. Now that piece is locked in 3D space. I can rotate around it and look around. I, there's holes for flathead machine screws on the bottom. So it's a little bit different than the other one. The six o'clock cylinder standard mounts here, and then the manifold mounts here. And in the picture, I don't know if you can see it or not, in the picture, the, the screws go through the steel base, they go through the manifold. 
in this base, the screws are flathead screws and they come up from below and get mounted uh, to blind threaded holes in the bottom of the manifold. And, and it'll make sense when you're putting it together. It's actually really simple. So if this is my main assembly now, I'm gonna file save as, and in my Three Sisters project folder, in my assemblies folder, I am going to call this Three Sisters Main. Three Sisters Main, save. Great. The idea behind this is that I am going to bring in a series of sub-assemblies and mate those sub-assemblies together and build the whole thing really quickly and it'll be great. And if I have mating issues, I can troubleshoot those at the sub-assembly level instead of the main assembly level. Also way easier to troubleshoot issues with sub-assemblies, making sure everything rotates right, my mates are good, rather than creating this mess, I call it the, the cake batter syndrome of, well, you take an empty bowl and you just throw all the ingredients in a bowl and you mix it up. A better approach might be one of those recipes that has a bowl for wet ingredients and a bowl for dry ingredients. And you mix this together and you mix that together and then you bring the two components together to create a cake. It's a more organized approach. So let's look at bringing in sub-assemblies to our main assembly. I mentioned in the subassembly of the piston cylinder spring and screw that the first part that I brought in is fixed. That can be a problem. You know, I can't move it, right? I can rotate and look at it, but I can't move it anywhere. It is fixed. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to pull that piston out, okay? And I'm going to save. Just, just, I haven't undone any mates. I just want to save it in this position. Let's go back to our main assembly. And I want to bring in sub-assemblies. So I'm going to go to Insert Components. And I can browse for the sub-assembly, but because I have it open, it's right here. And I can left-click, hold it down, and I can drag that over. Click, and there it is. Notice how what the relationship between these parts is. It's in exactly the same position as when I last saved. Good to know. I also, I can't move this. It is locked. That piston, when I open the subassembly, I can move it. Watch. I can move that. Oh, look. Tells me that it's changed. Do I want to rebuild it? Yeah. There it is. I just made that change. Remember, SOLIDWORKS is parametric. So changes that I make to one thing propagate to changes in the other. Huh. Well, if that's locked, how is this piston going to move in and out? I'm going to rebuild here. Here's the trick with subassemblies. We want to, and, and this has changed multiple times, so I'm used to doing it a certain way. So if I stammer a little bit, it's because I'm used to doing it a way harder way. There's easier ways to do it now. I'm going to right click on this, and you used to have to go to properties and check all these boxes, but right now, look at the difference between this icon and this icon. These are both assembly icons, but this is a fixed assembly. This is a flexible assembly. I want to make this sub-assembly flexible. Do you see what that icon looks like now? I just made it flexible. You should be able to see that that is a flexible sub-assembly, and that is an icon of a not, a, not flexible sub-assembly. Now watch. All of a sudden, I can move that piston in and out. Great. But I need two more of these for my main assembly, right? I make them flexible first, and then I'm gonna press the control key down on my keyboard. I'm gonna left click and hold down, and I can drag another one in. Again, press control on my keyboard, left click on my first sub-assembly, drag another one in. I have three of them now. I have subassembly one, one, two, and three. That's really powerful, especially if you're bringing in 20 things. Okay, so your job is to create other subassemblies. What would be some good choices? Well, you know, the manifold might be a good subassembly. It's got some stuff poking out of it. There's any number of subassemblies. 
the flywheel rotates and it has a shaft and a crank disc and a bushing. Those are all round things put together. The two six and 10 cylinder standards, they get screwed to the main bearing. There's a bunch of choices, but I want you to look at those parts and how they go together, looking at these four pictures and figure out three unique sub assemblies. I've already shown you one, three unique sub assemblies. 